Welcome to you Council. In today's lecture, we will explain to you what are some of the disputes, the issues that are the domain of family law in Ontario, and then what are some of the avenues through which you are able to resolve these disputes in Ontario. We begin with our usual disclaimer that this lecture is not legal advice. So if you have any specific questions regarding your issues, you should contact a family law lawyer or a paralegal or the Law Society of Ontario for a referral. What are some of the disputes that are the domain of family law? Essentially, family law deals with the rights and obligations of spouses, parents, and children. That, those are sort of the three parties that if they have any issues with respect to each other's rights and obligations, they will go to, um, they, that will be considered a family law issue. And some of the examples of these issues are prenuptial agreements, marriage agreements, Cohabitation agreements. These are cohabitation agreements when you are living as a couple, as a common law, not um, just as roommates. Separation agreement. Mediation and arbitration agreement, again, in the context of these issues. Separation and divorce matters. Child custody and access issues. Child support, spousal support. Family law, property division and trust issues. Restraining orders and issues of domestic abuse and adoption. So these are some of the examples of um, issues. If you have those issues, then you should know that these are family law matters and will be dealt with under the family law rules. Now, what are some of the avenues of resolving family disputes? There are a few ways that you can resolve these disputes. Number one, obviously, by direct negotiation. In this case, the parties talk to each other directly, they come to an agreement, and then that agreement, they write it up, they sign it, and then they follow it. They don't need involvement of any third party or courts or anyone else to resolve their issues. Um, a lot of times it is unlikely because the, the, the relationship is soured and it is not possible for parties to have direct negotiation. So if they are unable to resolve issues directly, they can always go to mediation. A mediator is a person, often a retired judge or a senior lawyer or or a, a psychologist or a social worker. Um, any of these uh, people could be a mediator. And then their goal is to, to be neutral um, and objective and help parties come to a resolution. And oftentimes, a lot of mediations are successful in fa family law disputes. Third approach is called collaborative family law. Essentially, in this approach, the parties make a commitment to each other that they will collaborate with respect to resolution of their issues. So they'll talk to each other, they'll come to mutual agreements, and, and it is not, sometimes collaborative family law matter uh, may result in, 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 in no resolution, and that's possible, but when you engage in collaborative family law, and if there is no resolution and you have to get into get to court and get into litigation, then you will have to change your lawyer. You'll have to find another lawyer. Collaborative family law lawyer will no longer represent you. Fourth option is arbitration. Um, this is uh, an option where parties hire uh, someone like a retired judge or a senior person who is considered an arbitrator. There are specific rules and regulations for how an arbitration is conducted, but this is not a court process. This is a, a process that is um, you know, outside of the court system. Parties hire, they pay uh, arbitrator's fee, they hire an arbitrator, and then the arbitrator uh, listens to the case and provides uh, a decision and and an arbitrator's decision is binding you, it can, it is enforced by court so it is as uh, good a, a decision as you get it from court um, the advantages of arbitration process arbitral process is that it is more expedient you are able to retain an arbitrator quickly you can have your matter resolved quickly the, the obvious disadvantages because you're paying for the process and you're paying for the arbitrator oftentimes the process is expensive. And if none of those four avenues work for you, then you can always go to court and have your family law dispute resolved in court. What is the court structure for family law in Ontario? There are three different kinds of courts in Ontario that deal with family law matter. Number one is called family court, which is a branch of Superior Court of Justice, but it's called family court. Number two is Ontario Court of Justice. And number three, Superior Court of Justice, and we will discuss one by one what each of these court does. A family court, there are 25 family courts across Ontario, from Barry, Belleville, Bracebridge, all, and, and to Welland. So these, the list is here, but there are 25 um, uh, family courts in Ontario. 
And the advantage of family courts is that deal with all of family law matters. So everything that I just explained to you could be a dispute relating to family law. They're all under the jurisdiction of family court. It's a one-stop shop. You can go to family court and get those resolved. If you don't have a family court in your municipality, if you're not in one of these municipalities, then a family matter is divided between Ontario Court of Justice and Superior Court of Justice. So, and, and there is some overlap, but there are some things that Ontario Court of Justice will not do and some things that the Superior Court of Justice will not do. So you need to have a clear understanding. If you don't have a family law court in your region, in your municipality, then you need to have an understanding of whether your matter is with Ontario Court of Justice or Superior Court of Justice. So what does Ontario Court of Justice do? It deals with matters relating to custody, access, child and spousal support, adoption, and child protection applications, enforcement of child or spousal support in a domestic contract. So this is the enforcement of child and spousal support, either it's in a or a court order. So in all of these scenarios, you are able to go to Ontario Court of Justice and seek relief. What Ontario Court of Justice does not deal with is divorce and division of property matters. So these are two important issues. But if, if your issue relates to divorce or division of property, then you won't be able to get uh, relief from Ontario Court of Justice because they do not have jurisdiction. Superior Court of Justice, what are the issues that Superior Court of Justice deals with? Obviously divorce and division of property because Ontario Court of Justice does not deal with it. Claims relating to family home, trust claims and claims for unjust enrichment child and spousal support, custody and access, and then applications and appeals relating to family arbitration. So if you had engaged an arbitrator and a de and decision was made and you are dissatisfied that it was not the just, uh, it was not a just resolution, just decision, you have the ability to appeal that decision with the Superior Court of Justice. Superior Court of Justice does not deal with adoption matters or child protection matters. It deals with child protection matters only when there is an appeal, but otherwise it does not deal with all of these issues. So once you have that basic understanding, then if you're going to court, then you're able to choose which court to go to. So you need to know, number one, whether your specific dispute, does it come under the umbrella of family law issues? I hope that you have some basic understanding of that. I hope you have some clarity on what are different options that you can exercise to resolve your dispute. And if you have to go to court, then you need to figure out which court you have to go to so that your dispute is in the right court and you're not wasting your time and money in the wrong court and then you're able to get your res your issue resolved expeditiously thank you for watching